Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to take a look at this Sony PS1, which I think is, is it a PS1 Slim? I don't know, it's got a hair on it. So the problem with this is that there's no display, uh, the power does come on, the disc don't think spins, um, but I'll check that, but there's definitely no, no display on the screen. So first we hydrate. And then we renovate. Right, I've got this hooked up to my massively reflective monitor here. And if we just power it on, you can see the power light comes on. I'm just getting some sort of occasional flicker on the screen, but, but nothing's happening. Let's try popping a disc in. And obviously we're going to test it with Barbie Super Sports. I mean, what else would you use? Let's pop that in. Let's just see what happens when we press this down to fool it to thinking the lid's closed. Nothing. Although interestingly, oh. Uh, ah, oh, that's almost right, isn't it? Well, it's never done that before. So yeah, it's, it's never done that before. Um, so I, I mean, I've checked the cable. The cable's absolutely fine. Maybe it's a problem with the AV port. Um, I'll let's crack it open and let's have a look what's what's going on. Right, so let's have a look on the back. So the warranty sticker is still on, which is good. That means nobody's been in here before. So it looks like we've just got six screws on the back. Right, and as usual, while I'm doing this, I need to give a shout out to my two Holy Hand Grenade patrons, which is Tidder and Taylor Helton. So you might not have heard that under the crack of the screw. Taylor Helton <laughs> and Tidder. Thanks very much, guys. It is massively, massively appreciated. And to everyone else who supports me. I mean, I'm not one of those guys to say, you know, smash the like button and all that nonsense because I cringe whenever I see it in other people's videos. But, you know, I've noticed a lot of a lot of my views come from non-subscribers. Uh, that either means that they don't like what I'm doing, which is fine. Or... I'm just forgetting to subscribe. So if you're one of those guys, hit that subscribe button. Smash it. Oh, well, that's fairly easy to get into. Uh, let's see what happens. There we go. Wow, that is easy. Okay, it looks like we've just got a couple of connectors for the CD assembly. Wow, what a nice little unit. That's really nice. It's uh, it's going to be quite good fun to work on this, I think. I can see some caps, which are the surface mount type, similar to the ones that are on the Game Gear that go all fishy and horrible. I mean, I don't know. This isn't as old as the Game Gear, is it? But it's possible that, you know, we've got some fishy leakage going on. How, does that, how do you get that bit out? Ah! <laughs> wow. All right, well, there's nothing immediately obvious jumping out at me, so let's plug this in while it's in this state right here. And let's power it on now. There we go. All right, so we're still getting the same sort of garbled display. I just wonder whether it is just a cap issue then. Because it, it's obviously coming on. Although what would make the CD not rotate? No, I'm just going to go around the board. I'll check. I think there's a few fuses that I can see around here. I think that's a fuse. I'll, I'll go through and I'll check those. See if I can see anything obvious on the board. But I think what I'll probably do is just, is just recap this and see if that makes any difference. Ah, 
Right, yeah, there is there is nothing immediately obvious jumping out. The fuses seem good. Uh, I don't really know which caps to replace. I, I guess I should replace all of them. The problem I've got is I only have the electrolytic type, and they're obviously a lot bigger than this, and I don't know how much clearance I've got. Uh, I could probably fit some in and bend them over, but I guess these ones round here are responsible for the video because it's right next to the, the AV out. I think what I might do is just warm... Warm the solder joints up and see if I can smell fish. That's a sentence I never thought I would say on this channel. Just looking inside the port, it looks absolutely fine. I've inspected all the pins, no problems there. So let's get busy with the fishy capacitor hunting. So that's the AV port there, and these are the ones that I think are probably responsible for the audio and the video. Probably these big ones. Now I don't know how to read that. I'm guessing that's 220... Is that 220 UF? 220 microfarad? I don't know. Or is it 105? Um, I'll see if I can figure out what they are. But I think I'll just pop one of them off. I'll start with this one on the right. Yep, that smells of fish. And there's definite signs of some, some leakage there, isn't there? Yummy. Nice. Right, let's see if I can figure out what that capacitor is. Right, it looks like it's a 220 microfarad 4 volt. So I've got a 220 microfarad 10 volt, which should do the trick. I'm hoping if I just bend that like so, it's no higher than than the original one, I don't think. I think while I'm here I might as well replace these two as well. Uh oh. I lifted a pad there. Oops. Oh, that's possible because the pads are damaged underneath. Ah, shh. Luckily, that is the negative side. Is it on ground though? That's the question. Looking at it, I think it, it goes from here. It goes up here. And I think it runs to... Where does it go? Oh, Damn, it goes straight into the video port. Damn. Okay. I am going to have to scrape back some of this here and run a little wire, I think. No, I didn't want to do that, did I? In fact, thinking about it, I can probably just put the leg of the capacitor directly there, can I? Presume I can. Right, I'll try to shape this so that it will fit. Oh, let's give this a go. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Captain Barge does it again. I think that'll be alright. No, let's do this one. Oh, it's a different one, isn't it? I'm guessing it's 100 microfarad, 6.3 volts. Let's try not to tear the pads on this one. That one was close. There we go. No one would ever know. Yeah, there's more signs of fishy leakage there, so these are definitely, uh, definitely needed replacing. I think I've got some 1205 uh, 100 microfarad capacitors, so I'm going to see if I can use one of those. Yes, I do. And I think I'll probably be able to use that. These are 10 volt, so it should be fine. Because it's more than the 6 point whatever it was. 6.3. Do the dodgy pad first. Lovely. I don't know if to replace them all. Uh, I, I, I actually, I'm not convinced that some of them will need replacing. I might just try it now and see if it works with those big three ones there near the near the video output. All right, let's try that now. Let's power it on. Green light. Oh. I've made it worse. Oh dear. Hmm. I wonder whether I damaged something there while I was doing that, or whether I just haven't put that capacitor on where I broke that that pad. Let's have another look under the microscope. I mean, that is where that goes, right? Or have I got that wrong? Um, oh, now I don't know, because I look in here, I can see there's a trace underneath, isn't there, under this white mask that goes to this side of this little SOT. Uh, is that it? I think it is. Yeah, I've done it wrong. Oops. Delete that bit from the video, Steve. Don't want to look like an idiot, do you? Let's just turn that round. Let's see if maybe I can bend this leg over to the. Oh, look at that! It's like it's tailor made. I am just going to double check with the multimeter that that's where it goes. I can see a little tiny bit of exposed copper there. Let's see if I can get the multimeter on that. All right, so. From there to there. Yes. Right, okay. Alright. Well, <laughs> oops. Let's solder it on there instead. And we'll say no more about it. Right, let's try again. Oh yes, that's more like it. Come on. Oh, you beauty. Excellent. Right, well it works now. Uh, I still don't know whether this works or the control ports work or anything like that. So let's pop it back together and let's see if we can test it. I also picked up another, another game to test just in case uh, the Barbie one 
offends anybody. <laughs> I think I might magically put this back together. Alakazam! So let's pop Micro Machines in and let's see if it works. No. Well, that's what they call an anticlimax, guys. What have I done? Right, so let's try it as it was before. And that works. Why why does it work? What what is going on? Is something shorting on the shielding when I put the shielding on? I mean the only thing I can think of is that we've got these these capacitors are slightly sticking up now. But that's that's not gonna I dunno. Maybe I'll just put a little bit of captain tape over the top of them just just in case. Right, so when the screws are in, that's going to be pretty tightly on there. So let's put some pressure down on it. It works fine. Hmm, I'm confused. Oh, maybe it's... is it this? Let's try connecting this up. No, <laughs> it isn't that. Oh, look at that. So when I push down this button here, which is what tells the lid that it's closed, it does that. How odd. Back to the drawing board. That obviously triggers the CD assembly to start seeking for the for the disc. I wonder then when maybe maybe I do need to replace all these caps. I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to, but I think I'm gonna have to. But I really don't want to. I mean, yeah, obviously that, that would be the sensible thing to do. I'm just worried because, for example, we've got these four here and I don't have surface mount capacitors and mm, I don't know whether I can position them so that they're out of the way. All right, let's do it. Stop whinging about it, Steve, and get on with it. Right, I've replaced a couple of these and... Whilst I was doing it, I was thinking, maybe that isn't the problem. Maybe the problem is the actual CD laser assembly itself. So I've just looked into it. I've just put a couple of volts into it using my bench power supply. And the motor turns fine. The Everything operates as you would expect it to. Which got me thinking. I wonder whether the power supply isn't giving this enough power... So as soon as you put that in, it, it, it's drawing some more current and it just can't keep up. I am using an aftermarket power supply. It's one of these, you know, the universal ones. And it's probably not very good. So I thought what I'd try is just to put 7.5 volts, which is what this takes, directly from my bench power supply using this adapter... And hopefully, well, I mean, I don't know, but I figure it's worth a go. Seven and a half volts. There we go. Power it on. And that comes on fine. So let's push on this now. Excellent. It is that, then. So when we push this down, yeah, that's operating normally. And the screen is staying on. Right, so I need a new power supply. But let's put this back together again. And let's test it when it's back together. 
with my bench power supply. Abracadabra? Right, now let's test it. Get in there. Nice. How'd you actually play this game? <gasps> I don't think he's supposed to do that. I don't remember this game being this hard. Absolutely terrible at this game. How are you supposed to know? Yay! Oops. Well, anyway, it definitely works, doesn't it? So I'm re shut up. So I'm really happy with that. I will get a new power supply for it. The power supply, I don't think, was the original problem. This definitely did have a video uh, output problem. So I'm fairly confident that it was those capacitors around the audio video output. I think I will go through and change them all because it, it you know it's good practice. So I guess that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care. Oh why did I wink? <laughs>